Hello people of the earth and welcome back to Quicksafe TV. My name is Mike and this is Borderlands 2. Today I'm going to tell you everything you need and want to know about elemental effects and what do they actually do in Borderlands 2. Now, let's start off by general talk about elemental effects. What are they and how do we use them? Some weapons in the game will spawn with certain elemental effects. Those elemental effects can be fire, corrosion, shock, slug and explosives. Different manufacturers have higher chance of spawning certain types of elemental effects. For instance, Dork Weaponry is the only weaponry in the game which is always going to be explosives. Or Malivan, the only weapon manufacturer that always makes elemental weaponry. We're talking about fire, slug, corrosion and shock. Weapons with an elemental effect, except for explosion and slug, will always have the displayed elemental effect chance and elemental damage. Depending on elemental effect chance, uh, you're going to apply effect more or less often. Generally, depending on the weapon type, the elemental effect may be higher or lower. For instance, for SMGs, the elemental effect can be relatively low, whereas for sniper rifle, it can be as high as 50% easily. The higher the chance to apply the elemental effect, the better, because that means that the more bullets is go are going to apply the effect. You can apply the same effect over and over again several times, making it extremely effective to have higher elemental effect chance. For instance, if you set the enemy on fire, you can set him on fire again and again and again, up to many times, just trust me. As long as they will apply, the enemy will continuously burn, and this burn continuously will make much more damage than your simple attack. Elemental effect damage is the... it's kind of hard to explain it, but it's not really representative. Generally, the higher it is, the better, but it's all about relativity. For instance, it can say 150, but when you set the enemy on fire, he's going to suffer, let's say, 50 per second burns, and the total burns are going to be about 600, right? Well, 200 is not really representative, or 150 is not really representative in this case, but when you talk about relative damage value, yeah, it kind of can explain to you how much damage it will deal. But keep in mind that elemental effect damage is irrelevant to the base weapon damage, and it does not, it is not taken into the account. Like, for instance, when you compare uh, compare Jacob's weaponry and Malivan weaponry, you can say, oh yeah, Jacob's has much more physical damage. But Malivan also has, for instance, burn effect, right? And this burn effect is what's going to make the bulk of your damage. Even though the physical damage might be lower, right? The elemental damage will compensate quite a lot and actually make it much stronger at the end. Now that I went all mathematical on ya, let's go ahead and talk about specific elemental effects. Elemental effects in Borderlands are a lot like elemental effects in Pokemon, except for some differences, right? Generally, each of the elemental effects, we're talking about fire, corrosion and shock, are effective against certain type of enemy, right? But at the same time, they're less effective against specific types of enemies, again, specifically the same enemies. For instance, shock damage will not be effective against a shock enemy, but at the same time, unlike like in Pokemon, the elemental effects will not be necessarily a best choice when the enemy is not weakened to them. Like for instance, when you're going to use fire against the enemy that uses shield, you're not going to have tremendous results. You're just going to have okay burns, right, to the enemy, deal okay damage, and it's not necessarily the best idea to just take a damage type you like. You generally want to have different attack types when you're trying to go for elemental damage, and you generally want to use them on specific enemies. Let's go ahead and talk about specific elemental effects and what are they effective against. Let's start with fire. Fire is incredibly effective against enemies that have naked hit points. We're talking about red bars, which is naked hit points, I call them, right? It's going to be incredibly effective in that it's going to deal tremendous amount of damage, set them on fire, and distract them from combat. The next effect is going to be shock. Shock is incredibly effective against enemies that use shields. There are not too many enemies in the game that actually rely on shields. There are stalkers, there are special operatives from Hyperion, but not much more than that, right? Some robots also, but yeah, not really much. The shock is going to easily penetrate enemy shields, and the special effect from shock is electrocute. Electrocution is going to have similar effects, much like burning. It's going to distract the enemies. Sometimes it's going to make them shake in a fashion like and prevent effective retaliation from them. The next effect we're going to talk about is corrosion. Corrosion is incredibly effective against armor, yellow hit points of the enemy. Corrosion applies the certain effect, which I like to call rust. I don't even know how to call it, corrodiate, corrode, 
Rust. Anyway, enemy is going to be all greenish and gonna slowly fall apart. It's incredibly effective against robots. In case of robots, their body parts is actually going to fall off. And for instance, when you're dealing with badass robots, this will make them much less effective in combat because you can remove their both arms and they won't be able to attack you effectively. The next effect we're going to talk about is slug. Slug does not have additional damage. What it actually does is it covers enemy in this slug. The material which is extracted from iridium, the new, the new found element that was found with opening of the vault. And what it does is it amplifies any damage received by the target except for slag damage. What you want to do with slag weaponry, you want to cover web enemy in slag and after that you want to switch back to any other weaponry. Because this, any other weaponry will be amplified by the slag and you're going to deal tremendous amounts more damage. The next one we're going to talk about is explosion. Explosion does not... Mm, have any chance to apply. It's 100% applied with every attack. Generally, torque weaponry has explosives on every possible weapon type they manufacture, and explosives are generally very good because they don't have an enemy that's particularly resistant to them. Explosives will always stay moderately effective against any enemy type, against any hit points, armor, shields, whatever enemy can throw at you, you're going to be reasonably effective against. The only issue with explosives is that they actually don't have any aftermath, so it's going to be just Boom, and that's it. Explosives is the poor man's elemental choice. They're okay, but they're not perfect against anything. And that's all you need to know about elemental effects in Borderlands 2. Generally, try to use the effects that are effective against every specific enemy and refrain from using things just to use them, right? Use fire against naked hit points, use shock against shields, and use corrosion against robots and generally armored creatures. That is all I have to say on the topic. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this video and my commentary do not forget to put a like on this video and favorite it if you would like to see more content from me do not forget to subscribe and come back for more later have a greatest day good luck in pandora and bye bye